New technology will make it possible to treat HIV with one injection. New research from Tel Aviv University points to a unique treatment for HIV-infected people that could be used as a vaccine or a one-off treatment for patients. As part of the work, the researchers reprogrammed the patient's lymphocytes to secrete HIV-neutralizing antibodies. The study was led by Dr. Adi Basel and PhD student Alessio Nermad, both from the George S. Y School of Neurobiology, Biochemistry and Biophysics in the Life Sciences Department, and the Dotan Center for Advanced Therapies in collaboration with the Suriski Medical Center, Ichilov. The results of the work were presented in the journal, Nature Biotechnology. Over the past two decades, the lives of many AIDS patients have improved with treatments that have transformed the disease from a fatal to a chronic one. However, we still have a long way to go to find a cure for HIV. Dr. Basel's laboratory is working on a one-time injection that could help treat the disease in the future. The new technique uses B lymphocytes, a group of granulocytes called leukocytes that have been genetically engineered to secrete HIV-neutralizing antibodies. B lymphocytes are responsible for producing antibodies against viruses, bacteria and other diseases. They are formed in the bone marrow. Upon reaching maturity, they move into the blood and lymphatic system, and from there to various parts of the body. Dr. Basel explains that, so far, only a few scientists have been able to modify lymphocytes outside the body. In the new study, we were the first to do this inside the body and make these cells produce the desired antibodies, he says. Such a treatment is possible thanks to special viral vectors that have been designed so that they do not cause damage, but only introduce the appropriate gene encoding antibodies to cells in the body. Furthermore, in this case, we were able to precisely insert the antibodies into the desired site of the B cell. All the animals treated with the drug reacted and had large amounts of the desired antibody in their blood. We also produced antibodies from their blood and made sure that they were actually effective at neutralizing HIV in a laboratory dish. Genome editing was performed using the CRISPR-Cas9 technique. It is a technology based on the bacterial immune system against viruses. Bacteria use CRISPR systems as a sort of molecular searcher to locate viral sequences and cleave them for disposal. The two biochemists who discovered this sophisticated defense mechanism, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudner, were able to redirect it to cut DNA at will. Since then, technology has been used to turn off unwanted genes or fix and insert desirable genes. Doudner and Charpentier gained international recognition when they won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. We combine the ability of CRISPR to deliver genes where desired with the capabilities of viral carriers to carry genes into cells, explained study co-author Alessio Nermad. In this way, we are able to engineer B cells in the patient's body. We use two viral carriers, one of which encodes the desired antibody and the other encodes the CRISPR system. When CRISPR crosses the desired site, it also directs the insertion of the desired gene. This gene encodes antibodies against the HIV virus, he explains. Scientists explain that there is currently no genetic cure for AIDS, so the research opportunities are huge. We have developed an innovative treatment that can defeat the virus with a single injection, which can bring a huge improvement in patients' health. When the modified cells come into contact with the virus, the pathogen stimulates them to divide, so we use the very cause of the disease to fight it, Dr. Basel concludes. Furthermore, if the virus changes, 
The B cells will also change accordingly to fight it. So we have created the first ever drug that can evolve in the body and defeat viruses in an arms race. Based on this research, we can expect that in the coming years we will be able to produce a cure for AIDS, for other infectious diseases and for some types of cancers caused by viruses, such as cervical cancer, head and neck cancer and others, concludes the scientist. Men and women. Are we genetically very different? Some diseases are more common in women such as migraine, and others are more common in men, such as Parkinson's disease. Is it genetics or other factors? Is it due to genes that women are diagnosed with more autoimmune diseases than men? Or maybe hormones have more influence? In terms of DNA, that is, the helix of deoxyribonucleic acid, the carrier of genetic information found in each of our cells, any, therefore also unrelated, two human beings are 99.9% .9 identical, although at the same time completely different in appearance. Individual differences in susceptibility to disease and in sports, mathematical and musical abilities are equally clear. A few years ago, Professor Shmuel Pietrokovsky and Dr. Moran Gershoni from the Department of Molecular Genetics at the Weizmann Institute took a closer look at some 20,000 genes encoding proteins, sorting them by sex and looking for differences in expression in each tissue, BMC biology. DNA contains information, among others, on the sequence of amino acids in proteins but also on the expression of individual genes. Eventually, they identified about 6,500 genes, whose activity was targeted to one or the other sex in at least one tissue. For example, they found genes that were more strongly expressed in male skin than in female skin. The expression of muscle-building genes was higher in males, and for fat storage, higher in females. Of course, women and men differ in sexual characteristics, which is due to the fact that women have XX chromosomes, and men, XY. We receive one chromosome from our parents. If the zygote receives X from the father, it will develop into a female fetus, if Y, into a fetus male. Of course, Quite a few sex-related genes were found by these scientists in the genitals and in the mammary glands. The latter not so surprising, except that about half of these genes were expressed in men. Because men have fully fitted but essentially non-functional breast equipment, scientists have reason to believe that some of these genes may inhibit lactation. But, for example, BRCA1 half genes which increase the risk of breast and ovarian cancer in women, are also present in men. In both sexes, they are strongly involved in DNA repair, points out Polish specialist Drive. Paula Dobos from the Department of Genetics and Genomics of the Central Clinical Hospital of the Ministry of Interior and Administration in Warsaw. Less obvious locations included genes that were found to be expressed only in the left ventricle of the female heart. One of these genes, which is also related to calcium intake, was very highly expressed in younger women, which declined sharply with age, which shows that they work in women until menopause, protecting their heart but leading to heart disease and osteoporosis in later years when gene expression is turned off. Yet another gene, which is mainly expressed in women, was active in the brain. And although its exact function is unknown, scientists believe it may protect neurons against Parkinson's disease, a disease that is more common and appears earlier in men. However, by far the greatest differences in gene expression in both sexes are related to the functioning of the immune system. In women, this system is more active. 
thanks to which they are more resistant to many diseases. An example is infection with the HIV virus that causes AIDS. Almost 40% are observed. Less viral RNA in women than in men. This makes women more responsive to vaccinations. But they have a bigger problem with autoimmune diseases, where the immune cells are overactive and begin to fight off some of the body's own cells. As much as 80% of these diseases occur in women. Worse functioning of the immune system in men, on the other hand, makes them more susceptible to diseases such as COVID-19, which seems to kill more men than women, and more at risk of cancer. They have twice the risk of dying from advanced cancer, said Dr. Paula Dobos during a scientific conference for journalists. While men are, on average, the stronger sex when it comes to lifting and carrying, thanks to their more developed muscles, when it comes to health and long-term survival, women are the stronger sex. Looking at gender differences, evolution often works at the level of gene expression. The core genome is pretty much the same in all of us but it's used differently from person to person, says Dr. Moran Gershoni. Paradoxically, sex-linked genes are those that are more likely to pass on harmful mutations, including those that impair fertility. From this point of view, men and women are subject to different selection pressures, and at least to some extent, human evolution should be viewed as co-evolution. But the study also highlights the need to better understand the differences between men and women in the genes that cause disease or respond to treatment. Shmuel Pietrokovsky. These findings prove that there are many pervasive differences in the basic cellular biochemistry of men and women that can affect an individual's health. Many of these differences are not necessarily due to male and female hormone differences but are a direct result of genetic differences between the two sexes. However, it seems that most of the differences we notice are due to a very small fraction of our DNA. And in some issues, culture may play the biggest role. It turns out that the belief that women are naturally more sensitive to pain is wrong. There are no genetic differences when it comes to pain perception, the specialist argued. A more important role is played by cultural factors, or perhaps social consent, for example, to feeling pain or expressing emotions related to pain, the specialist believes. Referring to research showing that women take strong painkillers for a shorter period of time and less often, e.g. during post-operative care. On the other hand, diseases associated with chronic pain such as migraines and fibromyalgia are much more common in women, but this should not be associated with genes. According to Dr. Paula Dobos, there are not as many genetic differences between men and women as it usually seems. Both sexes have basically the same genes, sums up the specialist.